So we're going to take a tour of river-dominated uh, deltas. So we're looking at the Mississippi River Delta here. It's flowing into the Gulf of Mexico, which has uh, some waves and tides, but the Mississippi River brings in so much sediment from draining the interior of the North American continent that this delta is really dominated by those river processes. So if we zoom in, we can start to see some of the morphology of the river. And it has the characteristic bird's foot geometry of a river-dominated delta. So the main channel is running in through here, and it's got these branching channels that are a little bit like the uh, toes of a bird. Now, I'm showing this in Google Earth, and the color difference here is due to the differences in the, the imagery itself. We'll zoom in a little more. And one of the things that becomes apparent uh, is the branching of the channels that creates that, that bird foot texture. So again, here is the main river channel, and these, uh, this white area are buildings. The highest point in the delta is the levee, right along the river channel, and then the greenish areas, greenish-brown areas here are bays that connect to the Gulf of Mexico, and the greener areas have uh, more vegetation in them. And so this whole area is built up of sediments supplied by the Mississippi River building out into the Gulf of Mexico. So we're going to take a look at the, um, at the channel and the, where it enters into the Gulf. So you can see the levees in the area here and here that are extending outward, and this is the main channel flow, and these brown shadows in the water represent areas with, um, that are shallower that reflect the continuation of those levees. This is a zone where you have the maximum accumulation of sediment uh, and would represent the mouth bar uh, facies in a delta. So we're going from part of the delta plain up here down into uh, the, the start of the slope and right at that change where the um, bar facies occur. So in this delta there is some wave influence. So if we go to a channel that's uh, further to the uh, east, there are two uh, lines here. That light color represents beach deposits. And so the, the main river flow is coming through here, again, with the levees on either side. There's a very large deposit of sediment, but the channel is flowing fast enough that it keeps that open. And then there are waves coming from the bay that's reworking that sediment into these wispy little beaches with a little bit of islands on them. So even in this particular case, the, um, the uh, delta is dominated by the river, but there's still some parts that are influenced uh, by waves. Now another interesting thing is we're going to zoom in to the... Um, uh, bay areas here, a lot of the top of the delta is accumulating mud and organic matter. And again, it, it's very close to the, the elevation of the, the sea level in the Gulf of Mexico, so you end up with ponded water here with um, little bits of organic island and, and areas that probably have uh, floating vegetation channels bring in some mud that gets deposited. There are places where there's almost no flow and almost no suspended sediment. And so these areas are accumulating organic matter and mud through time. So the Mississippi River is one of the, the largest rivers in the world and it, and it creates this delta. It does actually have a, um, a, a subsidiary that um, cuts off to the side. And so the river runs through here, through New Orleans, 
and um, up into this area, but there's a branch, there's a spot up here where some of the Mississippi River gets caught by the Chafalaya River and is flowing down into the Gulf of Mexico over here. So the Chafalaya is, um, drains part of the Mississippi River, and it contains a lot of sediment and is building out, two branches of it are building out these, these smaller deltas here. One of the natural processes in, in rivers, in deltas, is um, what we call avulsion. The river will flow through a main channel. Most of the sediment gets deposited in that channel. And then the rest of the area um, outside of the channel uh, tends to subside. The, the mud loses water and the organic matter decays and it gets deeper. And then what, during a flood, the river can end up cha suddenly changing course. And that's what would naturally happen with the Mississippi, the lower Mississippi going into the Chafalaya, if it weren't for a human engineering constraints uh, to keep that from happening. So I want to uh, sh show you an example of a river-dominated delta for a much smaller river. So the, the um, Mississippi River is huge, but the Ural River is much smaller, and it flows into the Caspian Sea, which is an enclosed sea, and thus it doesn't have very much in the way of, of storms or um, uh, tides. And so the Ural River is coming down in through this desert area here and flowing in to the Caspian Sea, and again, this color difference is the Google Earth imagery and is, is, a, is not natural. So if we zoom in to the Ural River Delta, we can see again that the, the main river channel is coming out very straight, and it's transporting sediment that ex keeps extending the levees further and further out with the mouth bar, and there's nothing to make it, it change direction. There are breaches in the levees that allow these subsidiary channels to flow, and they transport sediment and build out uh, these um, uh, areas of sediment. So in this particular case, there's enough uh, growth of organics, uh, marsh vegetation around the channels that it's not classic bird foot in terms of the coastline, but you can see that these, the channels are branching off uh, this main channel. So some of the key features of river-dominated deltas are, in terms of their morphology, is this bird's foot pattern and the extension of the channels in um, uh, straight, long, direct lines into the standing water. Thanks for watching.